Oh dear, oh dear. Britain's least happy millionaire, the ginger Windsor himself, Prince Harry, is to vomit out his life story in a navel-gazing tome set to be released in January of next year. Like January isn't already a hard enough month for everyone. Freezing cold outside, dark evenings, Christmas hangover, a dying tree, eye-watering credit card bills, and now 500 pages of poor me, poor me, from this troubled aristocrat. Well, I don't pity Prince Harry, born into a life of extraordinary privilege. I pity the poor reader who's got to navigate their way through this drivel. If only he'd flushed this self-aggrandizing manuscript down one of the alleged 16 toilets in his Montecito mansion in California. Harry needs to bog off. Notwithstanding the anticipated furore that will accompany the release of this book, if we're honest, the damage is already done, with our great queen having been caused huge discomfort when she was with us for fear of what this book may contain. As she led the country through the coronavirus pandemic, battled her own health issues and mourned the passing of her beloved Philip, all she could do was speculate as to the contents of this tell-all confessional and worry about the damage it might do to her family, the country and her great legacy. News of the book came long before the Queen's sad passing and any distress it may have caused the Queen is unforgivable. Now, I'm the king of free speech, so old Harry is more than welcome to publish his life story. But I'm not having this idea that he's some kind of global leader, some great thinker pontificating on mental health, inequality, climate change or the state of modern Britain. I'll take no lectures from this woke eco hypocrite navel gazing about his dreadful life as he flies around the world on a private jet as Brits at home are struggling with the cost of living crisis, poured about, partly brought about, of course, by the green policies of which he is so fond. And of course, that's when he's not sipping champagne at 38,000 feet with his missus, Yoko Mono. In the end, he sold his soul to Netflix and Spotify and sold his country down the river, partly through unsubstantiated and highly damaging allegations. If he hates the royal family, the monarchy and Britain so much, why does he hang on to those royal titles? Well, I can think of 50 or 100 million reasons why. So he's happy to accept the privileges of royal status and profit from them, whilst perpetually attacking the self-same institution. I personally think King Charles should remove those titles forthwith, given the damage Harry has done and will continue to do. Throw the book at him, Your Majesty. And in terms of the content of this so-called book, surely he's running out of stories to tell, having spilled the beans to Oprah and on countless podcasts. God forbid there should be a sequel to this book. If so, it will be a pamphlet with enough compelling material to fill the back of a first-class stamp. The book has a title. It will be called Spare, in reference to Spare and the Air, and him being behind William in line to the throne. Well, I've got a better title. I'd like to call it Bore and Peace. That said, I will buy it because I could do with a good doorstop at the moment. And with the cost of fuel these days, it might make for good firewood. This book is a waste of paper and the once loved Harry is becoming a waste of space. It's time for this touchy toff to move on. Rather than publish his life story, he should get a life instead.